Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum. My today's lecture is the poem The Most Beautiful Flower by Cheryl L. Costello Forshe. The message, first of all, I must tell you the message of the poem, which is a very important message conveyed to the readers in order to change their lives too. And the message of the poem is Life is the name of ups and downs, trials and tribulations. All it depends on man how he perceives his life. It all depends on the man himself, himself or herself, how he looks at the life. Everything in the world can be beautiful if we see it positively and from our true heart. Our psychological and emotional problems should never overcome positive aspects of our life. We should see the things positively. Only then things will appear beautiful to us. But if our negative thinking overcome us, then even bright things in life will look dull and unpleasant. Starting with your first stanza. The park bench was deserted as I sat down to read. Beneath the long straggly branches of an old willow tree, disillusioned by life with good reason to frown, for the world was intent on dragging me down. And if that weren't enough to ruin my life, my day, a young boy out of breath approached me, all tired from play. He stood right before me with his head tilted down and said with great excitement, Look what I found. Now, this time, first stanza is eight lines stanza, which is called octaves. Eight lines stanza is called an octave. Now here we see an old woman who is sitting all alone on the bench in the park. An old woman is sitting all alone. The old woman is seen sitting all alone on the park bench without any company. She has her book to read. The park bench was deserted. It was all alone when I sat on that bench with my book to read. Beneath the long straggly branches of an old willow tree, he says that she sat under an old willow tree with its large branches. A willow tree is mentioned here, an old willow tree. Willow tree is a symbol of loss and dejection along with the hope of future retrieval. Here it is a symbol of loss and dejection. Now she sits under an old willow tree with her book to read. Disillusioned by life with good reason to frown. Why? Why she is all alone? Why she wants to sit lonely in the garden? It is because she is disillusioned. She is dis highly disappointed and dejected from her life. Disillusioned by life with good reason to frown. She says that I have so many good reasons to get angry at for my negative attitude towards the world, I have so many reasons to tell. So she says that I am disillusioned and I have so many reasons to become disillusioned. For the world was intent on dragging me down. He says, she says that I consider this world, I blame this world that 
It is responsible for all my disappointments. This world has always brought me down to the depths of insult, to the depths of disgrace. She says that this world, she blames the whole world, that this world is responsible for all my miseries, for all my troubles. This world has always created hurdles in my way. So I'm not happy with this world. I am disillusioned with this world. Disillusioned means dejected, disappointed. And if that weren't enough to ruin my day, she says I had so many reasons to become disillusioned. For my troubles as I'm sitting all alone, I have so many reasons behind it. Why I am alone, alone today? I don't want any company of this world any people living in this world because this world is responsible for all my miseries and troubles. I am not happy with my life. I am not happy with this world. So she says I had so many reasons and if these were not sufficient reasons that what happened next? A young boy out of breath approached me all tired from play. She says that I had my own so many reasons to become disappointed. It seemed as if there were not enough reasons that a young boy intrude, intruded upon me. He interfered when I was sitting all alone. I didn't want any company when he intruded upon me. All tired from play. It, it seemed as if he had been tired from play and approached me directly. He stood right before me with his head tilted down. His head his head was tilted at one side, bent at one side and said with great excitement, look what I found. He had something in his hand and he was showing me. He said that look what I have found for you. She says that I didn't want that boy to stand there to interrupt my thoughts. I didn't want him to disturb me anymore because I, I have my own so many reasons to disturb me. Why should this boy come and to add to my miseries, to add to my troubles, to add to my gloomy and sad mood? So she says that, but that boy was persistent and he said that, look what I found for you. Now second stanza is, in his hand was a flower, and what a pitiful sight, with its petals all worn, not enough rain or too little light. Wanting him to take his dead flower and go off to play, I faked a smile and then shifted away. But instead of retreating, he sat next to my side and placed the flower to his nose and declared with overacted surprise. It sure smells pretty and it's beautiful too. That's why I picked it. It's for you. Now to the lady's surprise, to the old woman's surprise, she saw that that boy was having a flower in his hand. But what added to the misery of that old woman? She said that it disturbed me a lot. It does disturbed me more to see that it was such a pitiful sight to see that it was a worn out flower. It was a dead flower. It was not fresh which he was presenting to me. So it added to my troubles. It added to my miseries that he was presenting something which was dead. He was presenting something which was worn out. So she says that it was such a pitiful sight to see that this flower was dead. This was a worn out flower with its petals all worn, not enough rain or too little light. It seemed that this flower has not seen enough rain and light to, to grow it properly, to bloom it. Wanting him to take his dead flower and go off to play. Now I wanted that boy to go back along with this worn out flower. I faked a smile and then shifted away. I just gave him artificial smile. In order to ignore him, I gave him artificial smile and then turned my head to other side. 
But instead of retreating, he sat next to my side. But instead of going back, that boy sat on my side. He made his place on the bench by my side. He did not notice my fake smile. He did not notice that I want to ignore him. I have already ignored him by giving him fake smile. But to my surprise, he sat on the bench by my side and placed the flower to his nose and declared with overacted surprise. He placed that flower to his nose and smelled it. Then he, he acted with overacted surprise. He acted surprisingly. It sure smells pretty and it's beautiful too. He says that this flower has a beautiful fragrance and it is such a beautiful flower with a beautiful, with a pretty fragrance. That's why I picked it. Here, it's for you. He says that I have picked this flower for you because it is such a beautiful flower and its fragrance is very pretty. That's why I'm presenting this flower to you. Now, the third stanza is the weed before me was dying or dead, not vibrant of colors, orange, yellow or red. But I knew I must take it or he might never leave. So I reached for the flower and replied, just what I need. But instead of placing the flower in my hand, he held it in mid-air without reason or plan. It was then that I noticed for the first time that weed-totting boy could not see he was blind. Now, in this stanza, she again sees the flower which the boy was insisting to give her. She said that this weed was dying. It was almost dead. It was never fresh. And she didn't know from where he has picked such a dead flower for her. It has added to her miseries. She was already gloomy. She was already sad. And this boy was presenting her something which is dead, which is not vibrant of colors. She says that not vibrant of colors, orange, yellow or red. Even this weed was dead. I couldn't even identify the color of that flower. Whether it was orange, yellow or red, what was the original color of that flower could not be seen. But I knew I must take it or he might never leave. So she, but at last she decided that I should better take this flower from him. Otherwise, he will never leave the place. He will go on disturbing me. It's better that I should take that flower and let him go. So I reached for the flower and replied, just what I need. So I took, I, uh, str uh, I stretched my hand to take that flower. But instead of placing the flower in my hand, and she pretended, she says that I pretended that uh, this is what I need. I need, so I should take it. But instead of placing the flower in my hand, he held it midair without reason or plan. She says that I wanted to take that flower from that boy so that he may leave the place. I just pretended to say that this is what I need. But she was surprised that instead of placing that flower in the hand of the lady, he held somewhere in the mid-air. Instead of giving right in the hand of the lady, he placed it in the mid-air without any reason, without any plain plan. He was not joking. He was not playing with the lady. He just without reason or plan, unintentionally he held it somewhere in the mid-air. It was then that I noticed for the first time. She says that only then I noticed, I saw, I came to know for the first time that weed-totting boy could not see. He was blind. That this weed-presenting boy, this flower-presenting boy, weed-totting boy, flower-presenting boy was dead. He, he could not see. He was a blind boy. That's why instead, instead of placing flower in the hand of the lady, he held somewhere in the mid-air.
because he could not see where the head of the lady was. So for the first time, the woman came to know that this boy was blind. He could not see. Next stanza. Now when she came to know that that boy was blind, she says, I heard my voice quiver, tears shone in the sun, as I thanked him for picking the very best one. She says that this is for the first time that my attitude towards that boy quite changed. She said that uh, my eyes filled with tears and my voice started trembling and I thanked him for picking the very best one. I thanked him that he had picked the best flower for me in the world, the best ever in the world and presented to me. She said that I thanked him. I was grateful to him for picking the best flower for me. You're welcome, he smiled and then ran off to play. He said that she was most welcome. He became so happy that the woman appreciated that flower, the dead flower. And then he ran off, ran back to, his, to resume his play. Unaware of the impact he had, he had had on my day, she says that, but my life changed from that moment onward. My view towards life, my attitude towards life changed from positive to change from negative to positive aspects. She says that he might never know, this blind boy might never know how he has changed my life. That was the moment my all thoughts changed, my whole life changed. I sat there and wondered how he managed to see. I sat there for a long time and I was surprised to think how he could see, how he could feel, how he could see the lonely lady, the lonely woman sat on a park bench? How did he feel that this lady was disappointed and disillusioned from life? How could he feel that he came to her and presented a flower to make her happy? So she says that I wondered how he managed to see. How was he able to see and feel the feelings of the other people? A self-pitying woman beneath an old willow tree? How could he see that an old woman is sitting under an old willow tree and self-pitying? Pitying on herself, on her own life? Disillusioned from her own life? How did he know of my self-indulged plight? How did he come to know that I was miserable from inside? That I was a troubled woman? Perhaps from his heart, he had been blessed with true sight. Then she thinks that it is perhaps Allah Almighty has blessed him with true sight. It is from his heart which was blessed by Allah Almighty with the true sight. That's why he could feel the plights of miseries of the other people. That's why he is going from person to person to make their lives happy, to change their attitudes towards life from negative to positive. So she says that in this stanza, this stanza is very impressive. It gives lesson that we should always think positively. Although that, that boy was blind, but that even that dead flower, worn out flower looked very pretty to him. And he could even smell its fragrance. He could even appreciate its beautiful fragrance. Otherwise, it didn't have any. That, that weed was dying. It was almost dead. It did not have any fragrance. Still, he could smell. And he says that it has a pretty smell. It has a pretty fragrance. So it means that that boy has positive attitude towards life. He was looking at the things positively. He was thinking about the things 
positively. That's why everything, even that dead flower, looked very beautiful to him. Now coming to the last stanza. Through the eyes of a blind child at last I could see. She says that previously, few moments back, my eyes were closed. In fact, my eyes were blind that I could not see the things properly. I could not see the things positively. So through the eyes of that boy, that blind boy, at least I could started see the world now. This world which has suddenly become bright for me, I have started seeing the world through the eyes of this blind boy. And I could understand that the problem was not with the world, the problem was me. She says that I have always blamed this world for all my miseries and all my troubles. In fact, this world, now I have understood that this world is never responsible for my troubles. It was all depend, it all depended on my own thoughts. It was all negative thoughts, my negative attitude towards life, my negative approach towards life that this world, this life seemed to be troublesome for me. She says the problem, the problem was not, problem never lied in the world, but the problem was myself, my own inner self, my own personality uh, had a negative aspects which created problems for me. It was my negative thinking which created problems and hurdles on my way to life. And for all of those times, I myself had been blind. She says that previously, few moments back, till the few moments back, I myself was blind throughout my life. I could not see the world properly. I could not see the world positively. So the problem, I, I should blame myself now. I vowed to see the beauty in life and appreciates every second that's mine. She says that from now onwards, from this moment onwards, I have promised myself to see the things positively, to appreciate each and everything in life and to appreciate each second of time and to make myself understand that time is very precious. It should not be wasted in negative things, in negative actions, in negative feelings. It should rather be enjoyed. This life should be enjoyed. And if we see the things positively, if we have positive appro approach towards life, towards different things, then everything is smooth going. Then everything is beautiful for us. Everything is pleasant looking for us. So she says, I have wasted a lot of time in uh, in all those troubles and miseries which were my self-created miseries, which were my self-created troubles. And now I have promised that I will value each and every second of my life which is so beautiful, which is so precious. And then I held that wilted flower up to my nose. And then after that, I saw that flower which was in my hand. That dead flower, I put it to my nose and breathe in the fragrance of a beautiful rose, the flower which few moments back, which looked dead to me, which was unpleasant to me, which was so weird to see. Now I started breathing in the fragrance with my positive attitude, with my positive thinking. Suddenly this flower is emitting a beautiful fragrance now. And she says, I smiled as I watched that young boy, another weed in hand. Then I smiled and saw that blind, the same blind boy with another weed, another flower in his hand, about to change the life of an unsuspecting old man. He was running towards another old man to make his life happy. 
to change his life too. Perhaps another old man too was blaming the world or maybe dejected, maybe disappointed. And this boy having a weed in his hand, having a flower in his hand is going towards him to change his life too. So this little incident of that blind boy presenting that flower to him had a profound effect on this woman. It has a positive effect on woman's mind. It opened her eyes. She realized the real problem. Where does the problem lie? She vowed to enjoy the beauty of life. She started breathing in the fragrance of that dead flower and smiled when she saw that particular boy going towards another man to change his life too. So this is a very impressive poem. The most beautiful flower is very impressive, impressive poem which teaches us a lesson that we should always see positive things. We should always see the things positively. It all depends on our own thinking, whether our life is beautiful or whether it is miserable. It all depends on our own thinking, on our own attitude towards life. Thank you.